divine connection. How many of us want to be connected to God? Sometimes I just take that prayer and say, Lord, I want to be connected with you. I just want a divine connection. Because I know that any man who is connected with God, ha, a person's life can never remain the same again. John 15, 1 to 5. Jesus is the one speaking here and he says, I am the true vine. What he's saying by, for some of us who might not know the meaning of a vine, a vine is like a tree. It's a tree. So he's saying, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. That means my father is the one who has planted the, the tree and is the one who takes care of it. My father is the vine dresser and I am the vine. I am the tree. And all glory be to God. He now says we are the branches. So verse 2 says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, the father takes it away. And every branch that bear fruit, he prunes that it might bear more fruit. Verse 3 says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Verse 4, he says, and this is the, where the connection comes in. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. If you have a tree and you take, no matter how sweet that orange tree is, Take off the branch, that branch that, that has like 10 or 15 oranges attached to it. Cut off that branch and throw it on the ground. What will happen? Those fruits will die. It will never bear fruit again. So it says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me, unless you abide in Christ, unless you remain connected and attached to the vine, you cannot bear fruit. Verse 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Tell yourself, I'm a branch attached to the vine, and the vine is Christ. It says, he who abides in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Today is a day for us to have a deep assessment. Are we connected to the vine? Are we bearing fruit? We're a branch. What a branch does essentially is that a branch is a channel. If you look at a branch, it doesn't do anything. It is a channel. The branch is taken. It is connected to the vine. In fact, it grows out of the vine and then it bears fruit. So on this side, you have the vine. On this side, you have the fruit. In the middle is the branch. What does the branch do? It just stays. It stays connected. It gives fruit, so it takes. It takes from the vine. It takes nutrients. It takes the DNA of the vine. It takes everything from the vine that needs to be taken. It flows through it. It allows itself to just be there, processes it, and then it bears fruits. Praise the Lord. The purpose of the branch is to bear fruit. So your purpose is to bear fruit. If you're asking yourself, what is my purpose? What is God's plan for my life? It is to bear fruit. Everything God made, he made as a seed that can bring forth fruit. That is the way of God. Like the parable of the talent. He puts something in you and he expects you to take it and multiply it and bring out results. God gives us seed. He gives us different kinds of seed. He gives us the gospel. He expects us from the gospel, he expects salvation and eternal life to come out. He gives us salvation and he expects you to grow as a Christian and to bear fruits of righteousness and holiness and to stay away from sin. That is a fruit. Holiness is a fruit. Righteousness is a fruit. Staying away from sin is a fruit. And God commands you to bear these fruits. And the only way you can do this is by staying attached me to the vine. He gives you the Holy Spirit. How many of us this morning have the Holy Spirit? How many of us hope to have the Holy Spirit? He gives the Holy Spirit. As he gives you the Holy Spirit, he expects you to be bear the gifts of praying in the Holy Spirit. How many of us pray in the Holy Spirit? 
The reason, there's a reason he deposited the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. He expects you to pray in the Holy Ghost. We had a discussion yesterday evening, um, the ministers, and that thing was just heavily laid on me. That one of the reasons he gives us the Holy Spirit is so that we can pray in the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to pray in the Holy Spirit? You allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you. He's praying things that you don't understand. And you just stay there and you pray and allow him, you give him the time. That's, that's part of abiding. You give him the time, you stay there and you allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you. Spend an hour, two hours, just staying there. I tried to practicalize it this morning because I haven't done it for the long, a long time. When God ministers something to me, I try and practicalize it by the grace of God. So this morning, after all the things I wanted to do, I told myself from five to six, I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost. And after praying in the Holy Ghost a little, I will find my mind will go off. I will bring it back. Stay. Abide. I pray in the Holy Ghost a little more. It will change. To, suddenly I find myself singing. I say, no. No singing this morning. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost pray through you. Just stay there. Do you know the main meaning of abiding is staying? And I will talk a bit about that later. It's staying. One of the things we find very difficult to do as Christians is to stay. We're used to moving. We just like, we like to be moving, just to be going up and down, up and down, up and down. But God has called us to stay. So he wants us to preach the gospel, to manifest the gifts of working of miracles and so on and so forth. Every Christian is supposed to have a gift. If you're a born again Christian, you're supposed to have a gift of the Holy Spirit. What is your gift? The gifts are listed in 1 Corinthians, Pastor help me, is it 11 or 12 or 13? 12. The gifts of the Holy Ghost are lifted in 1 Corinthians 12, which is your own gift. If you don't know what your gift is, go back to Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you live on the inside of me. When am I going to begin to manifest my gift? Praise the Lord. He gives you a talent. He expects you to take that talent and bear fruit. Some of us have a talent to sing, to speak, to draw, to organize. God expects you to use all of these things for his glory. God gives you the seed of an idea or a dream, a business idea. How many of you have business ideas? You have an idea. God expects you to take that idea and run with it. A creative idea. He expects you to turn that idea into a gift. All that happens through the branch. Praise the Lord. I heard a man of God, T.D. T.D. Jake said something once. He said, do you know that as great as God is, God never made it. God has never, in his all his greatness, he has never made a table. God has never made a chair. God has never made an altar. God has never made those things. We see it everywhere. Who made them? It's not God. God has never made an aeroplane. How did God make it? How did, how did those things happen? He put the idea in a man. He put the idea in a woman. And he gave the grace. He gave the wisdom. He gave the anointing. And those things became reality. That's what God expects us to do. Now, I want to come to this idea of staying. We don't have much time. So, if you look at verse 4, the main thing that Jesus said, he said, abide in me. You're a branch abide in me. What does it mean to abide? To abide means to stay. Why were many of us complaining during the lockdown? Because we can't go out. God wants us to stay in his presence. To sit down. Pastor preached a message once, one January. He said this is the year that you need to just sit down and hear from God. We're too busy, too running up and down. God expects you to stay in his presence. To stay. When you stay, what are you doing? Stay in the place of prayer. That is the major problem we have, our inability to sit down and to stay. And to say, Lord, I have come today. Daniel stayed in the presence of God for 21 days. He was there praying, Lord, you have said you will deliver Israel. My father, it is in your word that you will deliver Israel. I am not going to leave this place. I am holding on to you until you arise and you deliver Israel. The Israelites were in Babylon as slaves. 
Do you know at the end of 21 days, a whole captivity of 70 years, captivity of 70 years, because he was able to stay in one place for 21 days praying, the captivity was broken and the children of Israel were sent back to their country. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? What did Daniel do? Daniel stayed. Stay in the place of prayer. Stay in the place of reading the Bible. When we want to read the Bible, we find it difficult to stay. So you pick up your Bible. You open it. Open it. Open it. Read one or two lines. After a while, there's something that is doing you in your mind. Don't know if it has happened to you. That, ah, I need to go and check the freezer. Things will be coming into your mind. Ah, I need to go and check outside. Ah, there's a program on TV. And it happens when you pick up that Bible. You find it difficult to stay. And it is in that Bible that the answer is. The word that will change your life. The word that will heal you, the word that will deliver you, the word that will save you is in the scripture. But where we find a problem is to be able to stay, to sit down for one hour. I'm saying this because I know the struggle I too go through. I have to really tell myself, we are do best sit down here. You will read three chapters today until you finish these three chapters. You will not get down. I have to talk to myself. Or else, there's so many things distracting us everywhere. Jesus Christ said, he said, unless you abide, you can't bear fruit. What fruit do you want to bear except you stay in the presence? We talked about praying in the Holy Ghost now. We talked about seeking God's faith. And one of the ways in which we also abide in Christ is in the place of listening. After you have prayed, after you have read the Bible, do you know it now gets to a point where you need to sit down and listen? God, what are you saying to me? That is the hardest one for a lot of us. But if you don't abide, as you sit down, the Bible says your ear in Isaiah 30 verse, eh? It's pastor that knows scriptures. I will know the Bible passage. I won't know where it is. <laughs> so Isaiah 30, 21. The Bible says your ear will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Are you looking to God for the way? The only way you are going to hear is if you settle down and listen. Because the world is so noisy, even inside our head, it's so noisy. The only way you are going to remain divinely connected is if you sit down and you listen. Praise the Lord. Je ah, why is your hallelujah so low? Jesus said clearly that without him, we can do nothing. It is not a debatable statement. You cannot bear fruit. Some of us are wondering, how, why do I have problems with sin? Do you know that righteousness is a fruit? Holiness is a fruit. Righteousness is a fruit. The Bible talks about the fruit of righteousness. If you can stay connected to Jesus, if you can stay in his presence, you will bear fruits of righteousness. You find it difficult to love? Do you find it difficult to love people? You find that you just hate people, you see people, you just dislike them? Why does that happen? Because you are not connected. You are not staying in the presence of God. Do you wonder why you cannot evangelize? You find it difficult to evangelize? If they say, go and evangelize, you start shaking and saying, what am I going to do? What am I going to say when I get there? Do you know why? Because you are not staying. If you are staying and you are connected, look at the example of Peter. Peter, when Jesus Christ was arrested, he stayed in a place. One, a slave girl came to meet him and said, you belong to, to um, Jesus. I've seen you with him. He said, no, not me, and he started cussing, it's not me, oh, I've never seen Jesus before in my life. Can you imagine that? About 60 or 90 days later, by the time he was filled with the Holy Ghost, by the time he had stayed in the upper room for so many days, after he was filled with the Holy Ghost, what happened? He went out and stood before 5,000 people, some of them major enemies, and he stood and he said, Jesus Christ is Lord. What made the difference? He was divinely connected. Do you find it difficult to evangelize? You don't know what to say. It's because you are not fired up, because you are not 
divinely connected. When you are connected with God, you are divinely connected with God, something happens. When you start doing what he asks you to do, just start. Just start. Whatever it is, business, ministry, whatever it is, when you start, the Holy Spirit himself will prune it and he will multiply it. But after you have done it over and over and over again, God brings new ideas. He brings expansion. He brings greatness. He brings multiplication. You just start. Depending on the vine, you just start. During the um, lockdown, I decided that I would plant <coughs> some, some um, vegetables in front. There's a small strip of land in front of the house. So I decided I would plant vegetables. So I planted shoko, buri, tete. And some of those things. I was so excited when I put the seeds in the ground. And they started coming up. In fact, every morning I would just go and look at it. Eh? I've never done farming before in my life. So I was so excited. When the, the, the tete rose to like this level. I now cut off the um, leaves. And used them to cook. I didn't take it out from the ground. I just cut off the leaves. And used it to cook soup. Do you know what happened? It started growing again. The shock of my life is that every place where I removed a leaf, do you know what came out? A branch. Please try it and see, or if you come to my house, I will show you. Where, that place where I plucked off a leaf, what came out was a branch. And another branch that, not just one leaf, but a long branch with different leaves. As I was preparing this morning, God reminded me of that thing. And he said, you just start. Once you start what I ask you to do, start witnessing, witness to one person, start a business, pray over it, you just start. I am the God of multiplication, just leave it to me. As you start and as you begin to, to harvest, you are harvesting, you just remain divinely connected with me. In place of a leaf, I will give you a branch. The, my greatest, the greatest ideas I have because I have my hand in a lot of things now. The greatest ideas I have, even sometimes when I'm writing my book and I'm writing fiction, the greatest ideas, what will happen here? What, it, I receive those ideas while I'm praying. While I'm pacing the room and I'm praying. Even things I have to do the with the office and I'm wondering what am I going to do. I was telling pastor recently, there was a time my, the outlook on my laptop crashed. I gave it to the IT people in the office. All of them could not do it. I could not use Outlook on my laptop. That morning, I rose up, I prayed. By the time I sat at my laptop, after praying, just God, God just gave me an idea. Do this, do this, do this, do this. And that thing worked. Your greatest ideas. What are you believing God for, trusting God for? Stay in his presence. That's what abide means. Just stay there. Just stay in his word, reading it. Stay in his place, in his presence, praying. Just stay there. Don't allow things to distract you. The devil will come and say, oh yeah, it's time to go and watch TV. Say, get you behind me, Satan. He will come and say, oh yeah, pick up your phone, begin to check. Somebody has sent you an internet, uh, that thing you posted on Instagram. Why don't you check and see how many likes you have? The devil will come with all those mundane things. You will tell him, get behind me, Satan. Just stay. And I pray that God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet. <laughs> we'll take one prayer point. And it's Father, give me the grace to stay. Many of us don't have that grace. Our minds are too busy. We just want to be on the move. We are men and women of action. But do you know that even during that action, as you're driving, do you know that as you're driving, you can be praying? Do you know that as you are in the bus, you can be reading the Bible? So the fact that you have to move around does not stop you from staying. So you are going to pray and say, Lord, give me the grace to stay. Lift up your voice and say, Father, give me the grace to abide. My voice is louder than everybody's voice and it's not supposed to be so. Father, give me the grace to abide in you to stay in your presence that I may bear fruit 
In the mighty name of Jesus, lift your voice to the Lord. Grace to stay, grace to abide, grace to bear fruit. In the name of Jesus, Lord, don't let me be distracted. Don't let me be distracted. Every spirit of distraction, I, I banish you from my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, help me to stay. Help me to wait on you. Help me to stay, to stay in your presence, in the place of prayer, in the place of reading the Bible, in the place of listening to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. You're going to say, Lord, please touch my spiritual ears that I will hear you. God is speaking. We're not hearing. God is telling you what to do. God is telling you the solution. He said he's forever speaking to you. He is speaking. He's speaking. You are the one that is not hearing. Say, Lord, touch, purify my life, whatever is necessary. Let me hear you. Father, help me to hear you. Lift up your voices and begin to pray. I need to hear from you. I need a word from you. A word will change my life. A word can move me from where I am to multiple next levels. Oh Lord, give me a word and let me hear you. So in a dream, speak to me. In a vision, speak to me. In your still small voice, Lord, speak to me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I need to hear from you. I need a word from you. If I don't hear from you, Lord, what will I do? I will just be going up and down, doing useless things. Lord, let me hear from you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Is anybody here, you're not born again today, you want to give your life to Jesus, you have not even started. You cannot become connected to God if you don't first of all accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Can I see your hands? You want Jesus, thank God for that hand. Any other person, thank God for that hand. Can you just quickly come forward because of our time? You Please, can you come forward? Please come forward. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. My Lord and my King, our brother and our sister, your daughters and your son that have come forward this morning, they're going to be taken out and they will be led to you. As they say the sinner's prayer, as they come to you, my father, my king, I ask that you will accept them in the name of Jesus and you will use them for your glory in the name of Jesus. I pray that you yourself will lead them to Christ and they will know Christ from today. They will never go back to the world in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Just stay a minute. Just stay there a minute while I pray. My Father, my King, we just thank you for this morning. We give you all the glory. Lord, I pray for your children. Can you just lift your hands up to the Lord this morning? Lord, I have not spoken words of myself, but I have brought to you words. I have brought to your children words from the Bible. It is God that says for divine connection, you must abide in me. Lord, I ask that you look into all of our lives. That thing that prevents us from connecting with you or for staying in your presence, my Lord and my King, destroy the power of that thing over our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, oh God, I pray that you will give us the divine grace to stay in your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my King, I pray that as we stay in you, you will give us wisdom. You will give us revelation. You will give us anointing. You will give us increase, prosperity, righteousness. You will cause us to bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. You have taught us in your word that all a branch needs to do is to stay. Father, give us the grace to stay in you and by you, Every fruit we have been trusting you for, every fruit we have been believing you for, in every aspect of our lives, let us begin to bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.